to Tour Room HQ. Today we have Cheney with us. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And yes, we'll be going through just a bit of background on Cheney, just a bit about the upcoming record and what makes him tick and some interesting facts. Welcome to the family again. Nice one, mate. Yeah, excited to have you back on the label. Yeah. So, um, yeah, come before we get into the the, the release itself, um, let's get a bit of background on you. Tell us a little bit about where you've come from, how you started out. Yeah. Background Swindon, I take it from? Yeah, Swindon's where I'm born and bred. Um, and then, yeah, I haven't ever left really. It's been a it's been a good stomping ground. Like I keep my head down there, and nice. yeah, just always been able to to crack on and yeah, let all the creative juices flow and whatnot. Okay, so producing wise, how long have you been producing now for? Um, so I picked up, it was like an old MacBook Pro and like Logic, probably eight at the time. Um, so yeah, like when I was about 15, 16 years old, so 20, 24 now, so yeah, I'm proud of maths, but yeah. about nine years. And what, yeah. what, what gave you the spark to get into production? What was, what, what was, the, what was the kind of touch point for you to, to get into it and, and want to make music? Where did that come from? Um, so I started off like playing playing drums like years ago, um, and then you know, I started off like from a young age. I was about seven years old, and then yeah, like start, I was playing drums for years, and then I like joined my brother's band at the time, and I was like playing pubs, um, yeah. yeah, getting like fifty quid here and there from the locals because they saw this little eight year old drumming. Wicked. Um, and then yeah, it just all stemmed from there. Really. Like, I, sort of like it's like a natural progression. I picked up the guitar after that. Right. Um, started started like writing songs and then it you know sort of like left my brother's band started kicking myself doing my own tunes and then yeah I think like like when I really got into production that was like the point where I started experimenting with you know like a stripped down song with like me and a guitar right um, and then you know a, a real simple idea goes from being from you know from this big to you know, the possibilities are endless, you know, so. So, of course, so, so sound like back home in Sweden, where, where was the influence? Was it was it parents' record collection? Was it your brother's record collection? Where, where was the kind of musical influence coming from? Yeah, so my mum and dad, like, are massive music lovers. They weren't, like, um, really musical themselves. I think my dad played drums years ago. Sure. Um, but, yeah, my brother was, like, really into music. My dad was listening to, like, soul, disco and stuff. So I've had all these records and, you know, a bit later on in life, sort of going through them and, you know, realising how many gems he's had um, really helped me out, you know, and uh, yeah, I think I had an influence on me. Um, so yeah. Yeah, you can definitely hear it in, in, in your productions, kind of going back even pre to, to the tour releases you had over the, you know, over the last 12 months. Listening back to some of, some of the tracks you put out previously, you can hear that influences from soul, from disco. Yeah, dare I say, a bit of rave as well in there as well. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of across the board. So, so yeah, that, that down to down to the kind of collection your mum and dad had in, in the house and listened to. Do you think? Um, do you think what's really helped you in production is that being mem- being that member of a band that kind of that kind of scenario where. You're out, you're gigging, you're in front of people. Did, uh, has that really helped you at all? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think just being able to like craft a song from, you know, like a, you know, like a, you know, like it might just be a guitar like chord progression or something. Sure. You know, I used to be sat in my room like writing a song on the guitar, and I think like having that knowledge or what, whatever that was, like, and taking it into the production side of things is like it's just like a bit of a different angle, I suppose. Um, sure. Yeah. What do you see as your plans for 22, 2022? Do you see yourself kind of, because again, going back to what I said earlier, you, you, your discography so far has been quite varied from the styles of music. Yeah. Do you feel yourself more kind of honing, all, honing in on one sound or do you like to keep it as an open book and go where you want to go? Yeah, definitely. Like For me, like it's, I don't, it's almost like no plan, you know, I just kind of like having a bit of a blank canvas so then, sure. you know, just seeing where it goes. But for sure, like I know like previous releases, you know, I've done stuff on Edible and, yeah. you know, Make a Move and CR2, but it's like, I think there's always like a bit of something there in every single record. And I like, I, I, you know, I understand a lot of producers maybe come up with like a different alias because they think, mm-hmm. you know, it's too soulful or too disco or something. But I don't know, something for me, like, I, 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 I kind of like the, it's like the opportunity of bringing those audiences together because I think somewhere under one roof, like they all sort of there's a connection, you know, yeah. like they, they get it, you know. I definitely think I, I'll agree with that. I think 
you know, it, it, my career in, in, in running the record label, things definitely in, in, in the early days were very pigeonholed. And especially over the last three to four years, that kind of whole genre thing's broken down. More and yeah. more DJs are playing across the board when they're playing out. More and more producers are, are, are playing or, or, or producing different styles of music. And I think that's that, that's, that's, re that's really a good thing, I think, because it, it just it just opens up the market a lot further. And, and especially from a producer's point of view, it just, yeah, it, it just means you're not kind of shackled to one sound or trying to yeah. follow a certain trend. Yeah, and with that, you know, kind of, who are, the, who are the people you admire at the moment? Some of the some of your peers who, who, you, who you look up to who are making music. Anyone you, you yeah you're really into at the moment? It's it's kind of mad. Like there's so much good music going on at the moment, and it's like I, I think I think it's genuinely like a really exciting time. Like, obviously, you've got um, you know like, I think I think some of the best that are doing it at the moment are like you and Vicar, Ben Hensley, and. Tommy Farrow and you know it's, it's just like and it is across the board as well you know like and I think everyone's bringing something of their own to the table and I think for, for me like the first time in a while I've been doing it long enough but like for me at least it's yeah, yeah. like there's a point of difference with every artist and yeah. you know a bit of freedom I think that's the most important thing. Anyone kind of outside outside of the uh, of the dance music bubble that you're really into musically wise but what you draw inspiration from is really I know we touched on the soul thing for you, your, your parents and whatever but yeah you know because you know, I, I can definitely when people hear it hear your music there's a lot of influence in there but who's, aside from dance music who are you really into yeah um, it's a good question like I, like I find like in a lot of my interviews I end up bringing up um, like Primal Scream uh, Scream of Delica mm -hmm. Um, just because it's like one of the, I come from like the sort of like, you know, live band scene and, sure. and uh, you know, like discovering that album and like that sort of Manchester thing that happened during the 90s was like this weird crossover between, you know, what was going on in the bands and then the rave scene and, yeah. you know, with the Hacienda and stuff. Yeah, and I, yeah I, became, I became obsessed with it in the end. And um, yeah, like Andy Weatherall, like, like what he did on that album, on Scream Delica, like, you know, that sort of changed the way I started making music and, yeah, made me a little less scared, you know, like, because I was like, often worried about, you know, how loud a hi-hat is or something, but right. you, know, you listen to that and he just whacks in these, like, joy, these mad noises and these sirens and it's just too loud almost, but yeah, yeah. Like, it shows you've got, you've got to have balls to you know, to, to, to go ahead and do it, you know, sometimes, so, yeah. Well, I think that's right, it's having that confidence and, uh, and belief in you and, uh, and people pick up on that. I think yeah. that it's, it, it's interesting what you say about that, that kind of, that time in the 90s and, and I kind of, you know, as I said earlier, I, I see a lot of that with a, a lot of the new acts that are coming through now, like the Ewan McVickers, like the Ben Hensley, the, 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 the kind of shackles are off a little bit and they're drawing parallels to different things, so it makes for, a more rounded ex experience when you listen to their music live because there's yeah. so much influence on it. And yeah, it, 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 it was uh, yeah, a fun time to be uh, be around in the 90s, listening to those bands and having the rave scene, like seeing that whole Manchester thing was just... Yeah, it looks amazing, man. Like, yeah, I, saw, I often say like, I've got, you know, growing up in like, the wrong era, but yeah, I'm jealous. It looked great. Anyway. And gig-wise, you know, um, obviously it's been hard for everyone, a anyone to gig over the last 12 months, 12 to 18 months. Something you're really interested in doing, playing, is it playing live, is it DJing, what's, what's Cheney, what's the Cheney live experience? Yeah, um, well I think at the moment, like, I see myself like as a selector, like, you yeah. know, in terms of, like, I love, you know, I actually love going out and DJing, um, I think the whole point of it is, you know, bringing, bringing your own taste, like, you know, sh showing other people records that they haven't heard before. Sure. And seeing that sort of reaction like, on a dance floor is amazing. You know, when you're playing a tune, and they, you know, they've not heard it. Yeah, yeah. And then they go back that night and they're like, "What's that tune?" You know, like what you know. And, and you've given that experience to someone. So, DJing part of it is going to be like you know, massive, massive part of it. Um, and then uh, at some stage, like, I haven't got any set in stone plans yet, but um, you know, I could do a lot of like live jams and stuff. You know, people follow yeah, me sure. and that they'll see like you know, I do a lot of live jams with like the machines and. Um, some of my instruments and stuff. So yeah, I'm gonna hopefully like incorporate that into it at some stage soon. Nice. So you've been working and uh, doing some live stuff with us down at HQ today. Um, yeah. Talk to us a little bit through about the live setup and, uh, and how that works. And yeah, so um, yeah, so I've done a, like a live performance. It's like a, it's, it's more like a 15 minute jam. But what I've what I've done is I've taken um, Love Again and Back to Me. Um, yeah as like the two sort of like focus points and then 
just molded a bit of like a like a setup as I would do it in my studio, like and have a jam around it. Nice. Um, and then yeah, there's a couple of other bits in the in the sort of jam. Like there's a there's an acapella from a Maxine record. Right. Okay. Um, and um, yeah, so just like using like my TR8 drum machine, which I use at home all the time and stuff. Um, and then yeah, I'm sort of like a massive native instruments user, so I've, I've got like a machine. Um, and then yeah, that's like the hub for like building things and you know like recording like a keyboard in and then like moving on to the bass and stuff um like years ago basically like when i started gigging on my own like i had like a loop station right yeah kind of like a cheering uh like that sort of thing um and then you know like, i just wanted to sort of like almost bring that element back into it a little bit like with like you know like building up loops and stuff yeah, yeah. And, you know in club music it's like surprising that there's like a format that i, I was so used to already right um and it's like you know very much like orientating around loops and you know like a crescendo up to something 2022 any gigs coming up that you want that you can talk about or yeah definitely like there's, there's there's one that's uh sticking out at the moment and that's uh ministry of sound for the That'd be like my first uh, touring touring debut in 2022. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so I can't wait for it as well. Like I love the Ministry of Sound. And it's a great club. It's a great place to kind of cut your teeth with us. You know, we've we've, we've spent God years and years there. We've been you know, residency for the best part of seven or eight years at Ministry back in the early 2000s. And um, yeah, yeah, what a great place to play. You know, what, what a great room to play and and the, you know, the sound system. The atmosphere and uh, the whole vibe of the place, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'll, you'll really enjoy it. But, um, yeah, yeah, I can't, I, yeah, can't, can't wait for it, honestly. For me, like, that's like the best part of it, you know, it's like, you know, you can put records out, it's great seeing how well they do, but when you play a record like, in a room and you see people, like, you know, losing their marbles and having just the best time, like, that's what it's all about, you know? I agree, I think, yeah, the, the, the crowd reaction is kind of, it, is the full stop to a very long sentence when you're making music, just to kind of yeah. see what, to, to see what, what, what you've what you've done and, uh, and the reaction to it, and uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll get that from the tour and fans uh, in February at Ministry. Yeah, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't wait. Buzzing for that one. Right, well, look, thanks for coming down to Tour Page Group. It'd be great to kind of you know, hear, hear your backstory and, uh, and listen to your music. You know, I can't wait for the guys to, to see the live performance that we've witnessed today. And um, yeah, 2022 sounds like it's going to be a big for you, big year for you. We're all really excited at the label to have you back on board. Um, right. Just let the people know where, where, where can we catch Cheney? Where, where do we find him online? What's what's the details? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram, Cheney UK. Um, that's where I'm most active. And then I'm on Twitter as well. TikTok as well now. Everyone on um, TikTok. Yeah, Facebook as well. And then obviously Spotify um, until, yeah, uh, maybe a couple of our final presses that might be bubbling up. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, obviously Ministry of Sound on the 26th of Feb. So yeah, you know, that's the best place to come and see me really. I should be there right at the front dancing, so I uh, can't wait for it. No, uh, again, we're all excited to have you on board and uh, yeah, thanks for your time. Nice, cheers. Yeah.